Hello and welcome back to another exciting Maya Q&A. This week, before we get started, I've got a small announcement. I've put my class for animating with motion capture for sale on Gumroad. If you want to learn how to use motion capture in Maya and expand your animation skill set, then I think you'll really love this class, and it's probably one of the best tutorials that I've ever made. More details on how to get a discount code are at the end of this video. So this week's question comes from Akshay Gotte, and I hope I've pronounced that right. The list of UV editor options that you have are not visible in my Maya. Please advise. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the main tools that I normally use for UV unwrapping. The last time I made a video about UV tools was back in 2017, and surprise, surprise, just six months later, Maya updated all its UV tools, so we're well overdue for an upgrade. But until then, I hope that this video will be a short introduction to the main tools that you would need if you were going to be doing some UV mapping inside of Maya 2019. Starting off, Maya now has a new UV layout menu where we can find all the major tools grouped together in a really nice interface. We've got on the left hand side the toolkit and on the right hand side the UV editor already docked and ready for you. So I'm going to be unwrapping this jumper that I made for Franklin and you're going to see that there's quite a bit of stretching around the chest area which is where I modeled some new geometry and you're going to see that we have this checker pattern which we can turn on and off from the options here. One of the really nice updates since 2017 is that there's a much better integration about selecting things in the viewport or in the UV editor. Most of the tools that I use are in the left hand panel over here and I mostly tend to focus on the cut and sew tab and the unfold tab. Although there is a wealth of tools also inside the UV editor menu. So my main workflow is breaking up the geometry into different parts. The seams from bonus tools are now gone, but the workflow is still the same because we can select edges and use the cut tool to break the UVs up into two separate shells by right clicking and choosing the UV shell and then using the move rotate or scale tool to move things around inside the interface. So if I want to reconnect two shells together, then it's really easy for me to make an edge selection and you'll see that it's very visually clear in the UV editor which areas go connected to each other. The old move and sew tool has been renamed now to stitch together. And one of the really cool things is that now you can choose whether it sews from A to B or vice versa. The whole UV tool section also now has a brush based workflow to it. So if I put these two shells fairly close together now and select the sew tool, I'll get a brush that I can change size by pressing B on the B key and dragging with my left mouse. And this will allow me to paint on the UVs and connect the shells together. There are many tools inside the new UV editor that work in this way. Another good example of this is using the cut tool, which if I select it, I can paint along the edges of the UVs and it will split them up again into two separate shells, except that this time I'm doing it interactively just by moving my brush along the edges. So anything that is labeled as a tool actually follows this brush based workflow. So when you're using the cut tool, the sew tool, the unfold tool, these are all brushes that you can use interactively. So I'm going to break the jumper down into different parts, following along where the natural seams would go for a woolly jumper. And then I can select various edge loops in the viewport and either by double clicking or shift clicking I can adjust my selections. Then I'm going to cut them all out and I really could have done this also using the UV selection tool, just from modeling I'm more used to selecting edges rather than working directly in UVs, but that's one of the great things about the new tool set, which is that that better integration allows you to work in the way that you want to work, and it gives you more options. So once I've got all my UVs cut and sewed together in the order I want, I can start applying a basic unfold. And I say basic because they've organized this very much like the modeling toolkit, where you've got the main tools in the panel where you can select all the elements that you actually need. But if you were looking for options or extra tools that you don't see there, they're actually inside the menu of the UV editor. So they haven't disappeared, they've just simplified things. So if you wanted to look for options for the unfold tool, you'd have to go into the tools section in the UV editor and choose the options from there. In this case the simple unfold tool actually works quite well and just by pressing the unfold button once or twice I can actually get the UVs to look fairly consistent. 
Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have time to make a perfect unwrap in this short video, but if you do notice any distortion, you can also press the optimize button, which will try to reshape your UVs, but the UV editor continues to work in a fairly consistent way to what you would expect inside of Maya. If you find distortion in a specific area and you want to make a correction there, you can make a selection of UVs and use either the optimize tool or any other tool and it will only affect that specific area of the UVs. As I mentioned before, there are many more brush-based tools now in the workflow. And if I go under the tools menu of the UV editor, I can find something like this smudge tool, which will allow me to move the UVs that I have selected around. And there's a whole range of tools here, which follow again, this brush-based workflow. Now, another nice feature is that the transform tools allow you to make quick changes to the position and rotations of your tools. Now, if I had scaled up all these UV shells so that they're all different sizes, as tends to happen when you're unwrapping things, if I select the UV shell that is for the front of his chest and I scroll down to the texel density section, this is a really nice tool that allows me to get the size of the particular shell that I've selected by pressing the get button. And then if I go ahead and make multiple selections to choose all the other UVs, I can press this set button and it will paste the size of my original selection into all the other UV shells. It's like scaling the UVs so that they all are the same size and you should see that the checker pattern on your model appears fairly consistent. So now all that's left is to put all these shells into a single tile and I might have to scale them down a bit to make sure that they all fit. And now I'll use the UV snapshot tool which has moved into the image menu and it's right down there at the bottom and that will let me save the UV layout as an image that I can open up in Photoshop so that I can create all the knitting pattern that is on Franklin's jumper and re-import it back into Maya. A very nice but subtle feature which is here is that now you can choose the color of the edges that you're actually saving which is really useful to actually be able to see them clearly when you import them into Photoshop. So that's a lightning fast overview of the basic tools for UV unwrapping and quickly creating tiles inside of Maya. If you do want to learn more about UVs you can check out one of my previous tutorials however I'd love to do an updated version of that tutorial but that's probably going to take me a while with my current time. If a longer UV tutorial is something that interests you, then drop me a line in the comments section below. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm selling my animating with motion capture class on Gumroad for all of you who want to download and enjoy my content. This week also for Black Friday, you can find a 15% discount code in the show notes below. And you can go to gumroad.com forward slash Yoni Santana for a class introduction and more details. This offer will end on the 2nd of December, so grab your code right now. Thank you all for supporting me as a creator and to Akshay for his question. Remember to like, subscribe, and push the bell button to receive notifications of when I'm releasing my latest videos. See you all next week, and as always, keep learning, stay strong, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.